Okay, couple of things. I just hope I get the time. Number one, INEC should please, for the love of mercy, stop the cheap blackmail. If they are trying to blackmail us now with the elections, why is that when people call their attention to the fact that there were flaws in the process, why didn't they stop then to have a rethink? Okay, couple of things. I just hope I get the time. Number one, INEC should please, for the love of mercy, stop the cheap blackmail. If they are trying to blackmail us now with the elections, why is that when people call their attention to the fact that there were flaws in the process, why didn't they stop then to have a rethink? I next should stop this cheap blackmail because they are beginning to look suspect. The damage is much already. We don't know what people are even saying about us on the international community. I think it was the 79 elections that made Fela release a song called Babala Nonsense. Crazy demo, democracy, demonstration of Chris. But the sad reality is that over 40 years after, we are still saying, as Fela said, we have turned our demo democracy into a demonstration of Chris. These same beavers Einek wants to tamper with, there's empirical evidence that says any attempt to reconfigure beavers would disrupt all the information on it. And let's not forget that the pictures of the results were taken on the beavers. So you want to reconfigure. Reconfigure, receiving means reconfigure the setting, reformat, wipe out most of things there for a software upgrade. So what happens to the pictures taken on the beavers? What happens to the accreditation done on the beavers? Accreditation records. We also have, have empirical evidence that says that information on the beavers Sometimes even take time to load about a month after. You remember the Osho election incident? Yeah. That we had a technical expert here to, that came to tell us that there were even variations in the results given to the party that first requested the Beavers information and the back end and the PDP. As we speak now, for the love of mercy, I think those materials should be taken away from INEC now and kept in a safe place. Because I don't trust the integrity of INEC still having those beavers materials in their custody as we speak. If we want to truly scrutinize the process. Did INEC tell us that they were going to upgrade the beavers before now? Were they not supposed to stipulate in the own guidelines they put out? And why do you need to reconfigure the beavers? Is it not the same voting register it will have? And the same polling unit is allocated to. The same INEC that want to reconfigure has not been able to tell us what caused the technical glitch. All of a sudden, the same INEC that claimed that his commission was going to meet to review the have not been able to come out with a review. And now they are so quick to go to court to vary the hitherto ex parte given. People should not pee on our backs and tell us it's raining. Because we are fast turning this democracy into a demonstration of Chris. Nigerians are not crazy. Let people be able to inspect. If INEC is not ready to do the election, INEC should take the blame, not try to blackmail Nigerians and hoodwink them into thinking that it is without these beavers reconfigure that they will not be able to do what they ought to do. Furthermore, I think we should even investigate this INEC Beavers contract. Because it's very suspect too. What was the due diligence behind those that were given the contract? How much did every Beavers machine cost? How much did it take to align the software in it? How much does it take to run the back end? I think INEC should be open to public scrutiny. And I think the EFCC should also investigate INEC on this Beavers machine and everything. But please, in all of this, they should remember, Nigerians are watching. And Nigerians are quiet because they want to believe in the process and trust in the courts. And when they are quiet, they also have a right to protest like the PDP protested. And that's why I'm very shocked 
that rather for the APC to keep quiet and their spokesperson to keep quiet, they keep fanning the embers of war and inflaming the situation. Or the APC members that forget in a hurry that are taunting the PDP for protesting and wearing black, saying they are wearing funeral clothes. I am sure they remembered that President Muhammadu Buhari at a point protested. And when he protested, Tiagas was used. And that led to the judgment that Femi Fallon or God, that you don't even need to get permission before you protest. Dr. Abati, you are the legal person. Am I lying on that? We all remember it was that protest as a result of the inhalation of the Tiagas that led to the demise of Juba Kadibu. Let's not forget, people protested in the past. So if they can protest too in the past, the question is why is it wrong for the PDU to protest? Why are they making the work even harder for President-elect Bola Tinubu? Because you see, and this is for President-elect Bola Tinubu, I hope this your spokespeople don't lead you astray. Because what they are doing is, they are doing the greatest disservice to you as a person. This is looking too triumphalist. This is looking too vindictive and puerile, to say the very least. This is looking too petulant, that any time people have a constitutional right to challenge something, you either tell them to go to court and say they don't have any right to talk. I keep asking, if we want to build a country, it is righteousness that we exalt this country. Because the process that a lot of people have complained against favors you now doesn't make it right. And that's why when I asked the APC person here that was here yesterday, that you claim that they were rigging too in favor of the Labour Party in the Southeast. So why don't you just call for a redo of the election if you feel disgruntled? He couldn't talk. That speaks volumes. We should stand for righteousness. Because it favors you, even if it's not a just system, you should speak against it. Because what goes around comes around. Life is like a boomerang. And we keep keeping this hurt. Yoruba have is saying, umbo, umbo, I will add that day. You are, it's in favor of you now. You are happy. But when it comes around, hope you will not complain. People have a right to protest. Peacefully, I should say. And nobody should mock anybody. All we want to do is to build a great country. Devoid of partisanship. And Nigerian people, please, it's time for you to shine your eye. The political class are one. It is who will benefit the people and the processes that the people will stand up for. And if you are draining, you are waning in terms of inspiration. Let Jennifer's doggedness inspire you. Despite the fact that she was hurt in the face, she continued with her process. She ensured she was going to vote. We must all embody the Jennifer spirit.